good things come in small packages. Don't be forgot, nobody. Don't be forgot, nobody. Don't be forgot, nobody to love. All we hear about is size. But how about you? What kind of fighters do you like to fight? Tall ones, small ones, medium? Well, Ferdy, that really doesn't, it doesn't really make any difference. Small, medium, or large, large, medium, or small. They're all the same. That's when we get in that ring, I bring them all down to the same size I am. Well, it's a question of styles besides size. Buddy McGirt is a patient fighter. He says he's going to wait for you to run out of gas, and then it's his fight. Well, Ferdy, styles is what makes fight. It's not how bad a fighter is or how tough he is. It's what kind of style he has. And I, and I think I got a style to stop the kind of style that he had. And Buddy McGirt has a different point of view. The fight at about 10 to become popular events at Madison Square Garden's Felt Forum. And why not? Everyone loves a punching machine. After opening his professional career with a draw, McGirt changed his management on the spot, and things have been uphill ever since. Combining his intense desire to win with ring smarts and the talent to fire away with either hand, McGirt has run up a record of 28-0-1 with 25 knockouts. In his toughest fight to date, McGirt met a determined Ricky Young last May in New York. McGirt teed off to the head, Young to the body, but even with Young's ability to slip most of the punches, those that did land finally took their toll in the final minute of round 10. Constantly looking to climb the ladder to a world title, Buddy McGirt views Frankie Warren as an obstacle that must be eliminated. Buddy, last May when you fought Ricky Young, the thing that impressed me most watching you that night was your patience. You just stuck to your game plan. Now with Frankie Warren, he's such a persistent, relentless attacker. Do you think you could keep that patience going? Oh, definitely. That's uh, my main goal is to do that because if I lose my mind and my game plan, then I fall into his trap, in which I can't do. The last 12 out of 18 times you fought in Madison Square Garden, which means you were the darling of the crowd. Now you're in Corpus Christi. Frankie Warren territory, screaming, hollering 100% for Frankie Warren. Will that bother you? Not at all. It, in a way, it takes pressure off me because uh, he has to impress the crowd. I don't have to impress the crowd. I'm here to do one thing, that's win. And here comes James Buddy McGirt, 22 years old, out of Brentwood, Long Island, some 45 miles outside of New York City. Record of 28-0, 24 by knockout. He has stopped 19 of his last 21 opponents. McGirt's last fight, June 23rd at Madison Square Garden in New York, and he stopped Rudy Fuentes in the eighth round. Buddy McGirt at the ring, and we are awaiting the appearance of Frankie Warren, who will make his way from that area. Buddy McGirt began his professional career back in March of 1982. His first bout was a four-round draw against one Lamont Heath coach. And then McGirt reeled off six straight knockouts. Among his 25 knockouts, eight have taken place in the first round. McGirt is more of a boxer than Warren. Uses more footwork. The concern of the camp of Frankie Warren is can Warren maintain that high level of intensity? The level of intensity that he reached his last three fights and uh, that type of intensity would be required here today to go up against Buddy McGirt. And here comes 27-year-old Frankie Warren. He's the hometown favorite from Corpus Christi.
Ricky Warren, record of 20 and 0, 14 by knockout. Only five foot two and a half, but a punching machine likes to go toe to toe. 11 of his 20 professional fights have taken place here in Corpus Christi. So we're getting set for Frankie Ward and Buddy McGirt will be back with the fight in just a moment. So we're set for the introduction, so let's go to the ring. Here's David Donaldson. Ladies and gentlemen, for our main event of 10 rounds of Junior Welterweight Boxing, we'd like to represent the great productions that are putting this, making this possible, main events productions, Dennis Duva, promoter, and also 3M Productions, Murad Mohammed. Ladies and gentlemen, for 10 rounds or less of Junior Welterweight Boxing, introducing out of the red corner, from Brentwood, Long Island at 139 and one half pounds with 28 wins, no defeats, 24 knockouts, number four in the IBF, number five WBC, in the white with the blue trim, let's welcome Buddy McGirt, McGirt. Okay, Ladies and gentlemen, now turning our attention to the blue corner from Corpus Christi, Texas, 141 and a half pounds with 20 wins and no defeats, 14 by knockout, made it number three IBM, number two WBC in the goal with blue. Gentlemen, gentlemen, buddy, oh, buddy, Frankie, y'all both know the rules. We gave the instructions in the dressing room. Let's shake hands and have a good, clean fight. Good luck, man. Okay, baby, let's go. Right. So we're set for Frankie Warren and Buddy McGirt. And no question about it, Frankie Warren crowd. 3,500 here at the Big Front Plaza oh, Convention up. Center. It's scheduled for 10. Referee Dick Cole out of Dallas. Scoring on the 10-point bus system under the Texas Athletic Commission rules. Referee does not take part in the uh, scoring. It's handled by the three judges. Fighter cannot be saved by the bell except in the final round. And the three knockdown rule is in effect. The judges, Harry Cicchini from Washington, Bob Martin out of Houston, and David Avalos out of Edinburgh, Texas. As we mentioned earlier, both very busy fighters, both non-stop. McGirt doesn't seem to tire or get discouraged. Very busy usually to the head and body. Tries to take the heart out of his opponent. A bundle of energy. And he is patient. He will not abandon his game plan. He just keeps fighting away. Of course, that is what makes Frankie Warren tough also. He just stays with a straight ahead, sledgehammer, pile driving style. First thing that we're struck with is there isn't that great a difference in size, is there, when they stand next to each other? Gert is taller, but barely. Listed as a three and a half inch height advantage and about seven inches in reach. Although Warren claims to be five foot four. And we have met five, two and a half. Step back, step back, no punching. A very even uh, and a rather uneventful first round as both men are rather tight. They're trying to get that distance cut between them. Both of them don't wish to run into any landmines in the first round and they're being rather cautious. Short left delivered by Warren. Under a minute to go in this opening round. Landed by Warren. Frankie 
Ricky Warren, the aggressor in these early rounds, will pick up points just from that aggression. Of course, being at home, almost anything that he throws and lands elicits a large roar from the audience. How will that affect our judges? We'll soon see. No punching, no punching, no punching. Final seconds, first round. We'll be right back. And there is Frankie Warren, ranked number two by the WBC, number seven by the WBA. In the gold, Buddy McGirt. And the white with blue trim. McGirt ranked number five by the WBC and number four by the IBF as we uh, check out uh, the alphabet ratings. And either Warren or McGirt could be in line for a title fight with a victory here today. The WBA junior welterweight champ is Rene Arredondo out of Los Angeles. The WBC champion, Patricio Olivo of Italy. Or today's winner could face IBF champ, Gary Hinton. Is that it? Are you out That's of champions? It. That's all. No, I thought there was going to be a couple more. Second round, McGirt has begun to find the range with a rather good snapping uh, jab. Wait, wait, stop, stop. Pick him up. Well, in the midst of the flurry thrown by Warren, Dick Cole, a referee out of Dallas, stopped the attack, telling Warren to get his punches up higher. Every, every Frank Warren fight's got to be characterized uh, by that, as was Joe Frazier, because of their size and their kind of attack to the body. They're small, and they come in winging. Come up, Frankie. Crowd getting behind Warren, who oh. did land a couple of hard body blows. A body blow weakened McGirt. His legs did a little number there on a blo body blow, and Frankie Warren went back for more. fight against Roddy Shields off the strong body blows he took away the left hand of Shields he weakened it well that's exactly what he's doing to McGirt McGirt's committing the error of running away from him too much and of course that's Frankie style he loves people that won't run away from him Choosing to stop and fight. Again, Frankie's non-stop action. Frankie Warren punching three, four, five punches to one. Coming up on 20 seconds to go. Second round. At this point, McGirt looks a little confused, like he doesn't know what to make of this human buzzsaw. And it's Warren on the attack. And hearing it from this crowd. That is the end of round two. Man, I didn't even call a butt. I'm making a close on the goddamn thing. All right, that's Lou Duva from the corner of Frank Warren claiming that his fighter took a butt in the second round. Also, not pleased about the fact that the referee Dick Cole stopped Warren in the screen in the midst of a flurry. There you see the cut. God damn him. Now that's the main uh, subject of the complaint. He's got a cut. Duva is livid because he did not call, the referee Cole did not call a butt when it happened. Now all of a sudden everything going Frank Warren's way and he's got a cut to worry about. And originally, Keith Jutris of Canada was scheduled to referee this bout. The McGirt camp vehemently objected. McGirt's co-manager, Howie Albert, was involved in a, a controversy uh, with Jutris when he handled Juan Laporte in a bout against Eusebio Pedroza. Warren's people did not object to Jutris, but a change was made, and uh, we get uh, Dick Cole of, of Dallas replacing Jutris. All right, wait, stop. Howie wait, Albert has here. got an elephantine memory. That was five years right. ago. This is round three. Marv Albert with the fight doctor, Bernie Pacheco, from Corpus Christi, Texas. And Warren beginning to show some urgency after taking that cut above the left eye. 
Well, knowing that he's got a good cut man like Ace Murata in the corner and knowing that he's in his hometown, it would have to be a mammoth cut before that would be a factor in this fight. of sanity, but he can't do it. We're approaching a minute left. Third round. And Warren continues to pursue McGirt. Finally showing signs of fatigue after that avalanche of punches. But how much did it take out of McGirt, who seems to be very slowed up himself? In the corner, Soto said to McGirt, stop fighting his fight. And that's exactly what he's been doing for three rounds. And therefore, that's what Frankie Warren has been wanting. And that's why he's been winning these rounds unofficially. seconds third round what's in it two hands two hands and this is round four welcome back corpus christi texas they're calling this the bayfront brawl we're at the bayfront plaza convention center teeing off with the right hand. What does the fight doctor scorecard show? Unofficially, I've got Warren sweeping those first three rounds. It's 30 to 27. Ever since that cut, Frank has put it in drive. Warren has been a non-stop punching machine. And again, the crowd responding to the buzzsaw attack of Frank Warren. up looking for some punching room as Frankie Warren has slowed down no one can keep up that two-handed punching for three minutes of every round and be effective halfway through round four scheduled for ten now that's what Frankie Warren does well what he's doing now pity pat pity pat and then a couple of real zinging punches and a chance of Frankie say one thing McGirt can sure take a punch he can take some punishment because he's being pummeled and a minute left in this fourth round 22 year old Buddy McGirt out of Brentwood Long Island 28 no 24 by knockout he's never been put down Frankie Warren has not gone down he's 20 and 0 14 by KO well, this is going to get down to a battle of gas tanks. Who gets empty first? I don't know how McGurk can take this continuous pounding, but by the same token, Frankie Warren is really showing signs of fatigue right now. Warren obviously not as sharp with his punching. Got off very strong the first two rounds. How about a leaping left hand from Warren? 
We'll be back with round five in a moment. And here's Frankie Warren out for round five, meeting up with Buddy McGirt. Frankie Warren became interested in boxing at the age of 12. His older brother, Willie, a middleweight fighter, would take Frank to the gym. Willie fought in the late 60s and 70s, facing many of the uh, top men of the middleweight division, including Marvin Hagler and Vito Antifermo, but uh, basically a club fighter. McGirt starting to turn on the uh, gas now. He has absorbed a fearful whipping here in these first four rounds. His corner has said, that time was because there's a piece of tape coming out of Frankie Warren's uh, glove. I don't think either fighter minds taking a little time off. McGirt coming back to his corner, seeing if certain who's got any fresh ideas. It's wet, that's why he can't take it off. The doctor, uh, Kiko Garcia, has come into the corner each time, but each time said no problem. Put it up there. The referee, Dick Cole, who has stepped, admittedly, into a difficult position. Uh, has done a good job of letting the two fighters fight what has been a very close man-to-man -man combat. At this point, the rest more valuable to Buddy McGirt. Warren with the right hand, a grazing blow. And McGirt with a good left. There's WBA junior heavyweight champion of Vander Holyfield, close friend of Frank Warren. Won the championship last Saturday over White Cowie. And received a standing ovation when introduced to the crowd here earlier today. I stood up. <laughs> I admired his uh, win over a tough Dwight White. My congratulations to him. Meanwhile, up here, the war continues. Warren in the gold, 27 years old, out of Corpus Christi, Buddy McGirt in the white. Just when it looks like McGirt is starting to come on, Warren pulls out a big punch from someplace and stops him cold, and they go back to head to head and body to body contact. Excellent exchanges in this fifth round. Warren, used to fighting in close, uses every angle conceivable. That's taught by Georgie Benton. You go one way, you go the other, you slip, you come from every conceivable angle. And Warren, in excellent condition, he's been training with Holyfield, who is also known for his stamina, but Kurt getting the left hand in. Final seconds, fifth round. Two hands, hold those hands up. Well, McGirt on his feet, and Warren taking his time coming off the uh, stool as we get underway in round number six. They let that tape stay out again. They should have just cut it and taped it over. Pull that corner over here. And uh, we get the timeout, and uh, you heard the opinion of the tape from referee Dick Cole. Well, he's right. I mean, uh, tape is no excuse when you just come out of a corner, and tape is dangling. That's one of the things you've got to look for. And, of course, they've got one of the best corners in boxing with Lou Duva, Georgie Benton, Ace Murata. No excuse for that kind of stuff. We mentioned the kind of shape Warren is in, and Buddy McGirt also prides himself on his stamina. He's trained by Dom Amoroso. In fact, McGirt says Dom is a drill sergeant in the gym, very rarely satisfied, lets his fighters know it. Away from the gym, Amoroso says McGirt is the most humble, compassionate kid he knows. Same as often said of the fight doctor. <laughs> I don't know what happens to Warren in that minute, but I'd like to take whatever it is that gets him into that kind of condition. He comes out fresh. He, he goes back looking like he's about to stagger into the corner, and he comes out looking like it's a first round. I, I, 
loved the advice that was given to, Mc, to McGirt in the corner. They said, you're fresh, you could go 20 rounds. Yeah. <laughs> he said, how about four more? What do you have on the scorecard? I've got uh, Frankie Warren ahead, 50 to 45. He has been doing most of the fighting, out punching uh, McGirt two and three to one, commanding and dictating the pace of the fight. You keep waiting for McGirt to show that great boxing ability that he's got, but Warren keeps neutralizing and smothering him. I must say, I've seen McGirt fight several times. He is a much better fighter than he's showing today. It's a question of style. up on a minute remaining in the sixth round scheduled for 10 junior welterweights buddy McGirt in the white frankie warren in the gold <laughs> look at that little waltz that frankie warren just did he just stuck close to him he's got like a magnet in his head that's drawn to the iron filings of buddy McGirt they just don't separate <laughs> Nothing he can do to get away from this human buzzsaw. He can't step back and go, go around. Ooh. Combination by Warren on target. Good combination by McGurk. After getting hammered by a great right hand by Frankie Warren. Remember, Warren is fighting in the style of Georgie Benton. Hit anything but hit arms. And we come to the end of round six. Someone in McGirt's corner said, you don't look like you're enjoying yourself. McGirt said, you got that right. Think of something to do with this buzzsaw in front of me. Tell me something. This is round seven. McGirt was also told in his corner between rounds, this is your big opportunity. Don't blow it. McGirt needs to put together a good, strong round. He needs to land a couple of strong combinations and make Frankie Warren feel it. Feel the possibility of a knockout in his punch. Right now, he is fearless as Frankie Warren. He just doesn't believe he can be hurt by McGirt, and therefore he's fighting that way. And now Warren into his bullying tactics. And McGirt trying to shake loose. and dirty at this point. This is Frankie Warren's type of fight. He can do this all night long. And the referee is doing a commendable job in letting them. He is not interfering. He's just letting it go. As long as punches are flying, he is stepping aside. And don't think they aren't butting heads and don't think that elbows aren't flying in there because they are. McGirt and he has him in the other corner now. It's just like moving a tackling sled. He just, he could play for the Oakland uh, Raiders. Or is that Los Angeles? Or the LA Raiders. <laughs> That's your field. Frankie has nothing, Frankie Warren has nothing on his punches right now, but his body is wearing out McGirt. McGirt getting off a good volley of punches. But he also doesn't have any conviction in his punching. To the time, 30 seconds to go. Seventh round, slated for 10. And McGirt able 
going to land the left. But here's Warren right back. And again, the crowd getting behind the hometown favorite, Frankie Warren. Back for round eight, Marv Albert and the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco from Corpus Christi, Texas. In Frankie Warren's corner, there was satisfaction with his performance. In round seven, they felt he had a solid round, although McGirt did get a couple of good shots in. Buddy McGirt in the white, print with blue, 22 years old from Brentwood, Long Island. Record of 28 no, 24 by knockout. McGirt showing signs of giving up in the corner. Al Cerdo had to reach back to every exhortation he had. And at the end, as he went out, he looked down at us and he just gave a shrug like saying, well, I'm doing the best I can. He's just getting overwhelmed. And he is. And as you mentioned earlier, we have certainly seen McGirt have some impressive performances in the New York area. But we mentioned right at the start that he has not fought the same type of quality opposition, particularly the last uh, three or four fights, if you match them up. Frankie Warren has had some very rough customers that he's got against and beaten. And how often have we seen it uh, at NBC over the last few years? A fighter comes along, builds up to 20-something and 0. Always looks good, looks impressive. We just had it with Sean O'Sullivan. Uh, you, you just... You, you can't substitute for experience and that you wonder are they making a mistake with Mike Tyson that way they're bringing him along with a bum every two weeks is he learning anything and Warren continues his attack he takes McGirt from corner to corner spins him around and goes back to the brawl and wall style and lands the right hand on the top of the head. The story of this fight is the inability of McGirt to get away from Frankie Warren and have punching room and show his boxing expertise. Frankie Warren won't let you get away. Watch your hands, man. Watch your hands. Frankie Warren not only winning this fight, he's choreographing it. That's what he's doing. He is just stuck to him. He's stuck to McGirt. He will not let him get room to punch. Let's see, Warren has accomplished the hat trick thus far in this round. He's had McGirt in three of the corners. Can he go for four? And he usually ends up in his own corner, so he hasn't, doesn't have to walk very far. He just plops down. And a look from above. Watch, watch the inability of McGirt to move. He's just planted right there. Watch that. You can, you can paint him right in that corner. Final seconds, eighth round. And here comes Buddy McGirt out for round number nine. Let's scoop it on the corner between rounds, the corner of Buddy McGirt. You gotta knock him out to the end. He's blowing it. He's three rounds behind. Al Serto telling Buddy McGirt, you'll have to knock him out to win. Howie Albert said, you got to give, you got two rounds left, three minutes for your mother, three minutes for your brother, and three minutes for yourself, which accounts for the fact that Howie has failed in several businesses. <laughs> oh. He needs Gil oh. Clancy to keep time for him. What a cruel remark from the fight doctor, Bernie Pacheco. I love him. He once offered me a free wig. It gets worse. the fight doctor scorecard and we presume on the official scorecards by the three judges and let's see if McGirt can step it up this corner telling him he needs the knockout and that is accurate he has to connect flush and solidly with Warren and it has to mean something 
Here's McGurk. That's the best he's done, he's looked so far. For the first time, Frankie Warren stepped back Whoa. wearily and got nailed. Excellent combinations landed by McGurk as this bout has opened up. That was the best that McGurk has had. The best opportunity to get rid of Frankie Warren. But Frankie has glued him to the ropes again and again. McGirt does not know how to get out. And Warren's right eye is closing. And the tape is flying from his left glove unbelievably. with the fighters while they were punching. Cole, I repeat, has done a good job in this fight. And he, a last-minute replacement for Keith Trufus of Canada, who was scheduled to referee and was pulled out by the uh, Texas Athletic Commission after objections by the camp of Buddy McGurk. So that's the end of round nine. And we will stay right here. Coming up. And final the fight. round. Win this round. Bartra, listen. Relax. You understand? You let yourself go in. Just relax. Water. Let him swallow the water. Swallow the water. You got his mouthpiece? Cut it out. Buddy. You can knock him out if you, you put it all together. Don't back up straight. Take your walk. I got it. Take your walk. It's the last round. It's all over, okay? You want to win it, babe? Yeah. Huh? Got it, Keep baby. your hands up. You put your punches it. together. Hook and right hand. This that was the best punching thus far by Buddy McGurk because he had distance and leverage, but Warren overwhelmed him after that. Right hand. Get it out. Get it out. That was Al Serto with the boxing clinic for That's Buddy right. McGurk. Don't lean on him! Yeah. And this the tenth and final round. Warren with the cut over the left eye, the right eye. On the way to closing, but he's well in front, at least on our scorecard. And so was Bruno last night when he went to bye-bye land, so anything can happen. This is the tenth and final round. McGirt had a good ninth round, so let's see what the tenth round holds in store for Buddy McGirt from New York. Again, the tape starts coming off of Frankie Warren. It must be that that tape is wet and doesn't hold. this round as we have the last round to watch this human pile driver in action when he's not punching he's using his body and his body is keeping McGirt pinned to the rope watch how he uses the body when he's not punching He's getting healed, he's getting hit by elbows, and still he comes on. What's this? No reason for that. McGirt caught Warren. Didn't have much on it. Cole separated them while they were still fighting. That's the first time that, Cole, uh, that he did that. The referee, I don't know why, because they were fighting. And we're coming up on a minute left. And the bout. Five 
seconds left in the fight. The Gertz corner told him two rounds to go. He needs a knockout for the win that Warren is so far in front. Gertz flurry and volley of punches did not land, not a one. And in the meantime, back comes Warren pinning him to the ropes. McGirt trying as hard as he can to counter punch. Now to 20 seconds to go. Tenth and final round. We'll be back with the decision after this. Not set. He's collecting the cards. Scoring is on the 10-point must system. And on the Fight Doctor scorecard, it was all Frankie Warren. The judges, Harry Chiquiti of Washington, Bob Martin of Houston, David Avalos of Edinburgh, Texas. The mauling, brawling style of Frank Warren, who took command right at the start. There were a couple of flurries by McGirt, but it appears to be clear-cut. Now we'll find out we're set. Let's go to the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, the judges scored 97-94. 98-92, 97-96, and our winner by majority decision, Frankie on a couple of the scorecards than you might expect has won by unanimous decision. Frankie Warren, a record of 21 That cut, did it spur you on to action? It got me going. It got, it got me, got me, got me drilling. Well, you drilled him almost the entire 10 rounds. Don't you ever get tired? I'm a, I'm a machine. I'm a, I'm a full, I'm a full developed, I mean, all the way machine, man. All I know is keep going, going, going. Yep. All right, will you bring the title to Corpus Christi? I'll bring him back home. <laughs> yeah! He's gonna be, he's gonna be the champion. All right, back to Marv Albert at ringside. All right, Ferdy.